Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for the glitch. Uh, it's uh, something about the audio and uh, sharing the content. So uh, let's begin without further ado. Uh, today, my topic, uh, what are we missing in web application? Before that, I would like to introduce the topic and myself as well, that what we are going to do and who am I and what I'm doing right now in the market. So if we just go with the flow, and this is a basic uh, short introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Mirza Burhan Beg, and I've been working with the Zero Day Labs in Manchester, UK for around five to six months now. Prior to that, I was in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia, and I was working as a threat analyst over there. So uh, in my career, I've been working as a bug bounty hunter. It's all started in 2013 and 14 when we start bug bounty hunting for big notch companies that are listed. So I am uh, a few of my credentials are that I'm OSCP certified along with some other great credentials of Elon security, and I'm pursuing more into that. So my main area of concern nowadays and from uh, 2017 to 18 and now on, I've been working with the red teaming assignments, the blue teaming, and all the other things, including the soft monitoring system and all the other uh, the components that we connect to secure our environment. Working with the EDRs and the thread analysts and the uh, doing the compromise assessments, I've acknowledged and I've witnessed uh, many things in the uh, web applications and the network. So nowadays we are mostly working with the web applications. And for that specific reason, I uh, did my web application penetration testing and it's been around seven years now that I'm working on a specific domain of the web application. And that's it. Yeah, I've worked for many business sectors and I am working in the industry for banking industry nowadays, mostly that I did my projects. So this talk and this problem occurs uh, in the banking industry most of the time because uh, the compliance and the issues that are raised for the uh, compliance and the ISOs and you are talking about the policies and all the other things. So we want to strengthen our financial environment more in the industry and in the world, uh, regardless in other topics. So let's uh, start the presentation, what I'm going to present nowadays, uh, today, and what we are going to do. So what are some critical web application flaws nowadays? So we are going to compare the OWASP top 10 previous and now. So in 2017, we used to see OWASP top 10 and uh, most of them, most of them are covering the areas from top to bottom. So in 2017, if we witness that and we have seen and we have worked on that. So injections are the most critical vulnerability in 2017 and now as well, but the injection the authentication flows, the XSS, and all the other things. But in now 2021 and 22 now, we are talking about the different kind of attacks. Now we are witnessing deserialization attacks, we are facing the authentication attacks, and all the others as well. So now it's a uh, pretty change in the OWASP top 10 as well that we have worked with the broken access controls and the uh, injections are moved to third position from first, why is that so and how we are going to test it as well we will talk about that but first the major changes in the current was top 10 is listed over here and you can find it on the web application as well the was so why there is a need for a change the main question lies that it's going pretty forward and it's it's going very smooth in 2000 till 2017 and now as well that we have a framework for the OWASP, we have uh, testing guidelines, we have the all the other things and the criticality and the severity of a specific vulnerability. So why we change that? We have changed because everything needs to be changed, right? According to the time, according to the need. So first of all, we will be taking a few examples and we'll discuss the some scanning techniques and. Uh, today, uh, we are talking about a vulnerability that could not be found by the static or the dynamic analysis or the dynamic scanners. So what you have to do, you have to go manually for these kind of vulnerabilities. Uh, 
So first of all, uh, static and dynamic scanning. I'm sure most of you guys are very well aware of these terminologies. And if you talk about the static and dynamic things, so what happens from the front end and the back end, you scan the source code, you do the web application from the front end, but I'm talking about the few, 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 if I can take the names, we have used the NetSparker, Equinitix, and all the other web scanners. And there was a IBM app scan source for analysis. So we wrote a code and we have a lot of multiple products that we can use for the static and dynamic analysis. But in today's world, uh, the vulnerabilities, the, the, the attacks and the uh, exploits, they are much more efficient than a scanner. So a human mind can think a uh, thousand of possibilities and we can direct them in different ways, regardless of the scanner. So now if you want to take a simple example, uh, how they are protected and how we can protect our web applications from such attacks. So I'm just taking an example of the XQL injection. Uh, we can talk uh, about 10 of things in the OWASP top 10, but right now I'm just taking uh, a skill injection just for the sake of the example how are we going to exploit that previously and how it is secure now and why I'm saying that it's moved from one to third or some downer position that uh, we can see in the OWASP changes. So what happened previously? We lack in information uh, security due to the input validation, parameterized queries, there, there were no parameterized queries and the correct escaping was not in the market. So what happens? Uh, we and you, we the tester do just a single quote and we uh, bypass the security and we get the data from the database. Very layman language I'm using right now. We just inject some queries into the uh, search bar input field and we get the data what we want from the server. But now, if we talk about the SQL injection and other attacks, so the SQL injections are protected. How? There are multiple, there are multiple libraries you can use for the ASP, PHP, and all the other things that are pre-defined, uh, secured. And if you want to use a input validation for your ASP uh, project, .NET project, or the PHP project, so you can induce those libraries and you can just secure your data input from the input validation point of view. So we have a parameterized query, store procedures, escaping is there in the market. And if you talk about the browsers, so now the browsers are very much efficient and you can uh, easily see that uh, your SQL injection query or your XSS cannot be bypassed from the browser that is handling your requests. So they have put the uh, filters, they have put the modules and uh, everything they can control from the front end as well, from the back end to the back end. So now it is quite a hard thing to do a skill injection. Many of us, many of us are doing the bug bounty hunting and all the other things nowadays as well. So if you talk about the skill injection, uh, I'm not sure 10% of the people are able to find SQL injection nowadays in the web application. Why? Because this is secure from the front end and the back end as well. So we have to look for the fact that now the browsers are changing. Now the libraries, modules, and everything is evolving and they are securing the application much more efficient way than they have used to be. Now, if we talk about the other vulnerabilities, the XSS bypass, so we have the filters for that, the correct escaping is there. So you can not bypass the XSS or uh, just uh, any other vulnerability by just simply simply placing the query in the box or bypassing uh, control with the front end just easily. Now you have to think critically on the other vulnerabilities as well and you have to follow the stream. Okay, so if we talk about the business logic flaws, that is the main topic of my talk today. The specific thing, the main thing that I am discussing now, and we cannot find it with the dynamic or static scanners in the web application. I'm sure most of you guys will uh, <clears throat> uh, raise hand for me on this one, that yes, we cannot uh, find the vulnerability business logic flaw in the web application. With the scanner itself, just the scanner, we have to tune it, we have to uh, do multiple things to just uh, run the scanner for the business logic. I'll explain it later as well. We have a lot of plugins for the burp and other things as well. So we can scan this specific vulnerability. This is the vulnerability that is the most critical in the web application or in any form of application if we are talking about 
why what is the business logic flaws why, how how do they even exist and what is the impact for this i'll just take an example for this one what are business logic flaws the business logic flaws is simply uh, an example now you are in the conference you bought a ticket and you head to the arena you showed your ticket and you are inside the arena but what if if you bypass the ticket checking process and you're just right in the arena without processing or without showing that ticket on the gate or something like that. So this is a flow. You, we have to pick it A, B, C, D. I have a few examples in the uh, other slides as well, but if we try to just uh, take an example from the Facebook, go to the Facebook, put your credentials and boom, you are presented with your homepage. But what if, if I skip the step two? I have the request for the st step one and three, and I just, rely on that and replace these actually with certain uh, what we can say probabilities and then we can see the screen. So business logic flow means you are breaking the logic and the flow of the business that is meant to be. So how these uh, vulnerabilities arise? Negligence, simply a negligence because as a penetration tester for around seven years, eight years now as a red teamer, as a security consultant and uh, I, I just want to thank all the developers. They are leaving the vulnerabilities behind for us. Uh, so I would like to thank the developers, the hardcore developer for the applications in every kind of application that they are working for. And why? Because if the developers codes very well and securely, then there is no job for us in the market. <laughs> so that's a huge thing for the developers for leaving the traces behind, leaving the vulnerabilities behind so we can work on this and we are working to secure everything nowadays. So negligence means you are leaving something in your code while developing your web application that can lead to a privilege escalation attack or a complete uh, data exposure or uh, what we can think of that how big this can be this can be a disaster for a financial institution like a bank or the insurance company if someone can access your data without your cookies or your session id or they are just reusing your session id or something like that so that can be a disaster thing for your organization just take an example we are working at, that example is in the presentation uh, in the coming slides uh, that's a practical example that's a financial institution that i have had for uh, as a white tech hacker and that was an assignment and that is a global product that we still use in the market but that is best so the, take an example that uh, uh, we are the we are insurance company and we have a target to meet we have a leads data is everything nowadays as we all know the data is everything you have the data you are winning in the market you don't have the data you are not winning in the market so everyone is after the data data from the original source a passive active anywhere we find the data so what if i can take out all the customers of your profile and I would like to go with them with my leads. And we are working in the same capacity, in the same company, in the same environment. But what if I can just grab your all the profiles and the clients from you? And I'm not authorized to do that. For that, I have to bypass the system for a business logic flaw or that kind of vulnerability. Or I do indirect object reference, we can fetch from the web application. So we can see the disasters. Okay. Common vulnerabilities or the misconception or the problems in the BLS, business logic flaw, that's a short form for that. What are we missing? Basically, we trust the client side. We trust the client that they are not going to do anything wrong or any, uh, they will follow every step that we have taught them and we have asked them for that. User won't always supply mandatory input. Just keep that in mind and do whatever you want to do with your input validation to secure it because we are thinking that user is going to provide me uh, email ID. Uh, we can not depend on the user that they will provide an email ID in the email box. For example, if they can bypass that and from the front end, the, the, the front end protection from the client end, 
we can easily bypass it with the burp suit and all the other things that we are using. But on the server end, we have to check it if either this is the same request that I'm requesting or they are passing some other data in that. If I'm asking you for the mobile application, uh, sorry, mobile number, so are you putting that mobile number in the field specifically or you are just uh, manipulating my data? So we trust the user. So don't trust your user, just do your protection. Uh, trust in the client set controls. Um, if we talk about um, back in 2013 and 14, the client side controls were very easily bypassed. Now it is also bypassed very easily. Whatever you have put the protection on the front end, we can just bypass it from the uh, intercept and we can uh, pass our own data. But it is mandatory that it has to be checked on the server side before leaving your uh, system or, or uh, arriving at the server. So you can secure it properly. So user won't always follow the intended sequence. What does that mean? User is not following the sequence uh, if you have said that A can uh, follow the A, B, C, and if they are not following the A, B, C, and they are just manipulating with A and C, then this is your uh, control, this is your call to check user identification, check user at every step of the web application. So these are the few things that uh, cause the vulnerability in the uh, business logic flaws we can talk about. Okay, so, Talking about my first application and talking about the practical thing that I did for a bank uh, back in my country that we were testing for vulnerability and accidentally I found a vulnerability in an enterprise solution. So there is a CV published and it's patched and it's all good to go. So this application, this is a financial services application uh, designed by the IBM Oracle. Uh, and the vulnerability in this application is that there are two users. One is a low privilege user and second one is a high privilege user. One user is the reporting manager and the second user was the admin. So what did I do? I did nothing especially. So I just record every request and response from the server to the client. This is a good habit if you are uh, doing the web application testing or the bug bounty hunting, just save every request and response in the notepad or anything you like to be very specifically using that again in the web application. So what I did, I just record every request and the response in the uh, web application that is coming and going. So after Sometime what I did, I just see that admin can see all the logs and all the reports in the system, but a reporting person, the reporting manager only sees a specific project. So what we have to do, we have to just manipulate the things and see if a simple low privilege user can access and see the admin uh, reporting features and all the other things and the logs as well. So for the sake of the uh, presentation example, I have taken and I have masked the data, uh, everything. This is the screen from the left hand side and the right hand side, the user and the, uh, he was a, uh, uh, engineer, he is with the low privileges and I just take the uh, request and response from the admin, save it to my notepad, log out that request, log in with the reporting, that was the low privilege user. And what I just did, I just copy and paste back in the repeater all the requests that I saved from the admin. And boom, what can I see over here? I can see every log and everything on the system that admin can see without a trace that I have logged into the system. So this is a very critical vulnerability at that time in 2019 because it was a fraud management system that they were using and they were uh, going to deploy it. So what we have to think about that, don't miss any requests, just say and repeat after and after every time. You don't know which request is gonna hit. You don't know which session, which page is missing the session ID validation or the user identification. The controller and the view, we, we, we can display all the things. If the controller is not intact with the user identification or the session handling, if a single control in your web application, 
your application gonna leave everything in the hackers or the malicious actor in their hand. So now, if we talk about the second application, and these all are my practical uh, uh, doings, and I've been working with the banks and industries. So this is a mobile application launched in a bank, a newly launched application. We have to bypass it somehow, right? We have to test it dynamically. We can use, we, we have used the mob SL. We have used the other tools, Freda, and all the other things for the mobile application. But manual assessment always went. That's my goal. So what I did, what, what, what we were doing, we want to bypass the flow. So bear with me and just follow the step one by one from the left to right. So first of all, we have a username and password field. Every application will have that. We put the right legit username and password, the credentials, so it can log in into the mobile application. Now it say on the second screen, it presents me with a password, the OTP. So OTP will be sent to your mobile phone and we can put that and we use as a 2FA, uh, we always do. So now what happened? For the first time, I did the legit username and password, legit passcode, and I checked the application flow and the behavior of the application that how it is responding on my request. So what happens? It's perfectly fine, A, B, C. Next time what I did, I use the username and password, and then I just put the wrong OTP. Uh, original OTP was on my mobile, but I put the wrong OTP. What happens? It says invalid passcode and it's redirected me to the user screen once again. So the flow was I use the username and password. I put the wrong password. It redirects me to the login screen once again that the, the OTP is not valid. I did nothing. Seriously, I did nothing. I didn't open my verb suit in this case as well. Why? I click on the login again and it just bypassed the system and it show me my banking application front end. I was also shocked because I have not touched the verb suit yet and I just put the username and password, wrong OTP, and it just redirected me to the login. I click login once again and it also bypassed. So what was the business logic flow over here? The business logic is that the application is not handling the error for twice or thrice time. It just checked the error that it exists and it bypassed for the next second time. So this was the logic that a developer somehow uh, coded right in the code that just check for the one time, not the twice or the thrice. So we have to be very uh, observant about the applications. Not always the burp suit or the scanner is gonna help you. You just have to trick your mind and you have to just go with the flow and try to break the flow as well in the application. Just try everything as you see in the application. It's not all about injections. It's not all, all about the desolation nowadays, uh, the excesses and all the other things, XML and TT injection. It's all about the business logics nowadays. And for this, uh, there was the there, there was a person. Uh, I'm not sure about his name. He bypassed the Instagram OTP, and for as a bug bounty hunting, and Instagram paid him twenty thousand US dollars for that specific single vulnerability because he was able to bypass the Instagram OTP. So. The business logic flaws are very important in the application and for the financial institutions, banking in industry, I'm talking about the data where your uh, money is uh, on the line and you can just not protect it. So please be patient and try everything you see in the application. So this was the second application I encountered. The third application was also a banking application and that required the burp suit. <laughs> so now the third application, there was another bank. We tried to bypass mostly as a uh, white hat hacker. My personal goal and my personal job is to bypass the system no matter how, no matter what, uh, because I've been doing the red teaming assignments as well. So my mind plays like that, that whatever you have to do, do it, but just bypass the system. Don't bring it down because we are testing in the uh, UAT environment most of the time and we all do that, right? Uh, all the white hackers over here, we do the assignment in the UAT mostly. 
if the client insists, so we can go for the production, but not necessary. We can work on the UAT. So this was on the UAT environment as well. And what I did, I used the verb suit exactly the same thing I did for the previous bank. I just used the username and password and I just put the OTP, proper OTP, legit OTP. And I just record every sequence of the user interaction with the server. Every question, every response I have noted down and I've saved in a file. It, it, in Notepad++, it's about 30 plus tabs. I request, I, I save everything to see what's happening in the web application, which request is going and what data is going. Even I save the .js and .css file request and response as well. I'm not sure which file will, will contain what, and then I do my analysis on that. So in this application, uh, what I did, I used the legit username and password, then the password was sent on my email. I put that as well, and I just log into the application. Same, I have recorded every request and response from my application. And then what I did, I just try to repeat it. After few repetitions, it, it seems that I can bypass the OTP. How? Very simple. Uh, there was a request when I just post the OTP and click on the login button or the continue button. So there's a request generated which verifies the uh, valid OTP. So I just record that one and there's a response from the server as well. There was no runtime response. There was a static response. Every time there's a valid OTP, a server respond a specific line of codes to you. So what I did, I just copy and paste it somewhere else. Now I provide the legit username and password and then I try with the wrong OTP. First time it just says that wrong OTP, if you can see on the uh, a, a, a screenshot right uh, top. So it says there's an OTP. Then I what I did in the next page, the diagram, the picture, as, as you can see, it's redirecting me to the home.espx. So there is a OTP and it bypass like this. The next screen, the next slide will demonstrate it much better way. So now. The second scenario that I did for the uh, bypassing the OTP, I put the username and password wrong. So now if you can see in the middle screenshot that is down, the provided OTP is incorrect because I have provided the wrong OTP. Then what I did, I just bring that request and response from the server saved previously 15 minutes ago, and I just put that in the repeater or the burp and bypass the system with the flying colors. So this is the application flow we are talking about. These are the three applications. I have encountered the attacks, most obvious attacks in the web applications, mostly in the <clears throat> banking industry. Why? Because where I work, most of the compliance are put into the uh, web application and the mobile applications of the banks, insurance, and all the other things. So if you talk about the data, health data, hospital data, and all the other things, they are most uh, valuable data as well. So we have to keep an eye if you are a new starter, if you are intermediate, or if you are champion, and if you are my senior. We just have to look for the flaws and all the other things, why and how my system can be bypassed, and just try multiple things, multiple things to just bypass your system with the sequence. Just focus on the sequence and then try to manipulate those requests. So security design flaws, why and how that all happened. This is an image I have taken from the port server, the developer of the burp suit. So uh, a simple thing that we have talked a lot in the previously that username one, you attempt one, attempt two, and attempt three. This is the exactly same scenario that, that I discussed on the mobile application uh, in the previous slide that I tried to uh, put the username and password, wrong OTP once, second time it bypassed the system. This is the exact example of this screenshot and the uh, vulnerability that I have discussed. So where are we lacking? We are lacking in multiple things. We are lacking, first of all, in the coding practice. So first of all, if you are a developer or a security enthusiast, you have to focus on the secure coding practices. Either you are a developer or no developer. You just have to uh, be able to read the code to catch the flow. If you're not a hardcore developer, that's not a problem. You 
just need to read the code and see if you can find a flaw. The exploit writers, the exploit developers right here in this arena, uh, this is a piece of cake for you. You just see the code and you just find a vulnerability to bypass it. But for the new starters and all the other people who are interested in this, so go for the secure coding practices as well. So this is all about design and logics that how you design your application. I'm not talking about a medium or small scale application. I'm talking about the large scale applications, uh, the enterprise, we, are, we, we had a talk about SAP, previous uh, presentation. So the SAP system, the enterprise, if you are designing your own ERP, that will contain 50 modules and 100 of developers are developing the same application, but the core, the architect should be in uh, one team's hand because you have to secure the enterprise and all the other things. So methodologies to test your application. I uh, previously said that there are no scanners static or dynamic, you can scan that uh, on the web application, but there are few alternatives that you can use. So uh, with the burp suit or others as well to automate your steps, right? We have seen the automated scripts as well. If you want to automate a task, so you can just script it down and it's automated. It's not basically AI, it's automated. You, you, you do all the work behind that, that A, B, C, and blah, blah. So there is a plugin if you want to use in the burp suit, uh, there's a plugin named Authmetrics. What it, does it do? It just repeat the workflows with different credentials, different roles, different users. So what you do, you just record a sequence, uh, web page, login, dashboard, reports. This is a sequence. And now you will give it different users, different credentials, different uh, privileged users. One user cannot see other user data and you can just use this verb. Uh, application. Recently, recently, uh, I'm on a travel uh, uh, to a lot of countries for uh, pr private and official work. So I encountered another vulnerability because uh, nowadays uh, we all uh, previously in 2020 and 21 mostly we do the PCR test for the COVID, right? So there was a lab and I got my a PCR test and they send me a report on the email, right? So I just opened that uh, and that was just calling the API of the lab. That, and that is a very renowned uh, hospital and the lab in that country. So what I did, I just tried to manipulate that request and see if I can see others data. And fortunately, happily, <laughs> as a penetration tester, I, uh, get my hands on all the information of that specific lab and hospital because I can see all the application, all the reports of the patient, all the data user by just removing a single tag in that URL or you can see it in a request. So this is really harmful if you are talking about the health and your financial data. So this is a recent discovery that I have done with my uh, lab or hospital, you can say. And I try to stay in a hotel as well, and I'm trying to bypass that. Maybe next time I'm going to present that as well. So this is uh, the methodology. If you want to test your web application, just use the auth metrics with the burp suit and check all the flow, flow of your application that it is following the sequence or it's not following the sequence, so that's in your hand. So what to look for in the source code, what, what, you, what you are planning. So just design full understanding of your application, divide your application and model it. Uh, and one more thing, please uh, be careful with the threat models. Always, always, always develop a threat model for your application, no matter how many pages are there, no, many, no matter how uh, much critical or not critical that application is, always, always make a, a threat model of your application that will help you a lot in the coming times. So analysis, uh, analyze every control that you are giving to the user user ABC. Nowadays we have the application 
we go to the user roles and we just tag the pages a b c d e f just try to see that if that can be bypassed or not. if you're a developer or a security person just try to check your own application by your own hands so you are much sure that this is a secure application now <clears throat> what you have to ask if you are a business um, operator if you are a account manager and if you are a project manager or something like that that just talk about the data from whom where am I am seeing the data where to where and from where where the data is coming to the where the data is coming uh, going and from I am occupying all the things why what cause and what purpose you need the data why what purpose and how much time you need it so just build a timeline we call it a playbooks that uh, we use in the compromise assessment thing that uh, please create your playbooks in the web application point of view as well that how often you just provide the data how you are going to provide the data if you're using the api secure your apis because nowadays everyone is very interested in the api but they're not securing it i'm telling you this thing that most of the developers most of the people know how to develop an api how to write an api how to fetch the data but they are not protecting it as much as they have to so this brings to the conclusion of my presentation thank you very much everyone for your patience and I am really sorry that I have to present that there on a stage, but due to some problem, I am not able to join you guys personally, physically. So thank you very much for your time.